Okay, welcome to episode 3. Sorry about the late upload. I've been extremely busy. What you'll see me doing in this episode is I'll be creating the player's character. So, that'll be quite good. Basically, by the end of the episode, we'll have a player that can walk around so that, as with the input engine that we made last time, we will be able to walk the player around the different parts of the map that I also showed again yeah, last time. Uh, what you see me on the screen at the minute is just making the class for the player. I've made a new class called Entities, and this will be the main class for the player and also all the NPCs in the game as well. Uh, back is just the name of a tile, which you obviously see me using in the level class. And what I'm doing is I'm using the same thing as it has the right coding in it just to create an image of the player for me. And as you see there is just I'm giving it a position of where the player can be. Uh, I've set it at 0, 0 at the minute. Next, as you can see, I tell the game to render the player. This is just so that I know that the player is rendering. And as you can see in the top left corner there, the player was rendering. Uh, this is just a picture of the map, like what the picture, what the program runs for the map and converts. And then obviously you see me choose the position that I want the player to be on. I then include the level X and level Y variables in the render function. This is so that I can make sure the player is rendered onto the level as opposed to just onto the screen. Otherwise what you see is as you move the level around the player is just sort of slide and it wouldn't look right. As you see here I don't actually have it get X and get Y in the level class so I quickly create them, run it and as you can see the player stays where he is on the level. He doesn't move as the level moves and therefore it makes it look more realistic because he's actually put onto the level. What you see here is I am creating a new picture of 160 by 160 and this is just used as a basic grid. I use this as a grid and then I use the grid to design different images. And what I'm designing here is a circle. This circle will be used, as you'll see in a short moment, to put around the player's feet when the player selects selects his character. This will lay to move him in the final part of the game so that you can move the player, etc. And I would have done this bit off camera but I thought why not show you a little bit of how I create images and as you can see nice and easy to create 16 by 16 and I just draw away uh, as you can see here I'm making a new another tile called select and using it in the same function as you see before however the colour reference if you notice is actually zero this is because I won't be using the colour reference to access it instead I will be just telling it when to render Obviously I make a boolean here, which a boolean is just a variable that has a true or a false. That is the only thing it can equal. Uh, this is better as that's all I want the selected to be. And as you see I just put if selected. That just means if selected holds the value true. And obviously I tell it where to render. And I tell it to render at the player's feet. When I do it, as you can see, I don't know if you see, saw there, but it was actually round the bottom of the player's feet. You could just see it. This was because... I didn't position it very well. Basically, I positioned it 16 above the feet, and the circle was only fifth, was only 16 itself. When I had to position it about halfway-ish, and you see me in a moment, I mess around with the variables. Uh, the other thing I didn't notice here is I weren't telling the entity to tick. I was telling it in the tick function that selected was true, but I was never telling it to tick, and obviously, therefore, it wasn't drawing the circle. And so, as you can see here, I'm just messing around with the vari variable just to sort of see where I want the circle to be drawn. And for the moment, I decide on two thirds. So I times it by two, and then divided by three, and that gives me two thirds. But and then what I do is I include the level x and level y functions, uh, variable, sorry, and I tell the class to hold them itself. And this way. What it'll do is it'll mean I can use level and the X and level Y up above and then I can use them with I believe I'm do the click so that you can click on the player and select him and that will cause the selected to be true or of course if the selected is already true it'll mean the selected will be false. Okay what you see here is just me making an X MX and then Y. This is just an easier way of storing the mouse positions as I have to divide it by the scale just in case I decide in the end to scale the image up. Uh, this will just make it so that the mouse corresponds with them otherwise you'll sort of get a wrong read and it will be reading 100 when 
the on the screen it's actually only 50. And next thing I do as you can see is turn it to tick and I also have to make a get width in the tile function as I was asking for the width. And as you can see it don't go right there. The reason this is is because when you're clicking the mouse is registering all the time as being pressed and therefore it's constantly doing that function saying it's true and it's swapping it backwards and forwards 60 times a second and obviously this isn't what I want and therefore I have to just quickly put in a different thing what I'm doing here is making a function called invalidate and this is as you see earlier when I made the inval variable what that done was it made it so that I could tell the level when it had to re-render and that's what I've had to do here when you do that when you're clicking on them and the selected circles coming up when you're clicking off of them the level's not re-rendering and therefore it's still showing the circle there obviously it's not meant to do that and so I just have to tell it to re-render and as I was saying earlier about um, constantly telling it that the mouse is pressed the S change that I'm doing here is just what I use it's the func function that I use in order to make sure that it only registers once for each time the mouse is pressed and as you can see it switches on and off when you're clicking on him. Next thing you see here is me telling add a new function for the player to tick. Now in order for me to be able to call one function and the player to tick and the entity class to tick I have to make sure that the function is set up in exactly the same way and as you can see that's what I've done here. Uh, I'm using a key event VK left that just means when you press the left key on your keyboard it will allow the player to move to the left obviously and then obviously I can use that VK right for the right key, VK up for the up key and VK down for the down key. Next thing I have to do is make it so that it's a key listener. This just sets it so that well it sets it as it sounds. It listens for when the key is pressed. Um, you can do pressed, typed, released. Pressed is that it's held down, typed is when you tap it and released is obviously when you've released it after holding it down. I set um, a velocity there as you can see called velo where that's a new point that has an x and a y variable and as you can see I just set the position so that it adds an, the velocity to the x and the y and obviously I set the velocity to minus 1 and 1 depending on whether you press the left button or the, the left key or the right key and as you can see I have to make it so that the super class ticks so that just means the entity class and as you can see I set if it's selected to only allow you then to move. I also add an else statement there which just means if the left key is pressed it will set the velocity to minus one if the right key is pressed it will set the velocity to one and if nothing is pressed then it will set the velocity to zero however as you can see here it just kept moving even when I released the key it was still moving left or right depending on which one I pressed so I just decided to print out what the velocity was and it was still coming out as one minus one depending on which button I press and what I figure out it was I hadn't set it to set the key code to false when I let go of the button and therefore as you can see I do it here and I just change up and down and now I can do it up and down as I wish you see them black lines what they are is that is where the level isn't drawing behind it as the player is moving it's just constantly drawing on top and leaving a black smudge where it was so what I had to do is I have to actually set it that it's to invalidate the level whether you move left, right, up or down. We see here is the level moving and as you see I'm just adjusting it so that it's set in max um, places for the level as you're moving up, down, left and right. This just means so that you can't hold the mouse at the top of the screen and move the level off the screen as it doesn't look very good when you do that. As you can see as I said you invalidate the level and it renders nicely and as you can see I'll walk around okay that's the third episode thank you for watching please check back on Wednesday when I will be uploading episode 4 and you'll see what we're doing then thank you